Britain report, the statements from William and Harry in response to it. Harry's latest uh, documentary about... Uh, I made a statement to the Dyson report, a written statement, because, yes, indeed, I was working for Panorama in the mid-1990s. I made a panorama about the royal family, which went out in 1994, and, and this is all recorded uh, 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 and was brought to Lord Dyson's attention. During the course of that uh, panorama programme about the royal family, I became aware that... Uh, Princess Diana was indeed interested in doing an interview for. I think, you know, that uh, we have perhaps underestimated the severity of the mental health issues that Harry has grappled with over the years. He's alluded to them. He's made no secret of it. Uh, he is now talking about them uh, uh, quite uh, repetitively. Nick, thank you very much. That's uh, Nicholas Witchell speaking to us, uh, a royal correspondent. Thank you very much. Time now is 14 minutes past eight. There has been unprecedented criticism of the BBC from Prince William after an independent inquiry found the 1995 Panorama interview with Princess Diana was obtained by deception. The Duke of Cambridge said the incident contributed to her fear and paranoia and isolation. We can hear this statement in full. I would like to thank Lord Dyson and his team for the report. It is welcome that the BBC accepts Lord Dyson's findings in full which are extremely concerning, that BBC employees lied and used fake documents to obtain the interview with my mother, made lurid and false claims about the royal family, which played on her fears and fueled paranoia, displayed woeful incompetence when investigating complaints and concerns about the programme, and were evasive in their reporting to the media and covered up what they knew from their internal investigation. It is my view that the deceitful way the interview was obtained substantially influenced what my mother said. The interview was a major contribution to making my parents' relationship worse and has since hurt countless others. It brings indescribable sadness to know that the BBC's failures contributed significantly to her fear, paranoia and isolation that I remember from those final years with her. But what saddens me most is that if the BBC had properly investigated the complaints and concerns first raised in 1995, my mother would have known that she had been deceived. She was failed not just by a rogue reporter, but by leaders at the BBC who looked the other way rather than asking the tough questions. It is my firm view that this panorama programme holds no legitimacy and should never be aired again. It effectively established a false narrative which for over a quarter of a century has been commercialised by the BBC and others. This settled narrative now needs to be addressed by the BBC and anyone else who has written or intends to write about these events. In an era of fake news, public service broadcasting and a free press have never been more important. These failings, identified by investigative journalists, not only let my mother down and my family down, they let the public down too. Let's speak now to our royal correspondent, Nicholas Witchell. Uh, morning to you, Nick. Uh, I mean, listening to that statement, it, it, there's a lot to it, isn't it? It's very heartfelt, it's very personal, but there are wider issues addressed as well, which I think, and you can explain more, allude to the relationship, maybe going into the future now, between the media and the royal family. Charlie, it's an absolutely devastating statement by Prince William. Let's make no bones about that. And I think the events of the past 24 hours, the Dyson report, the statements from William and Harry in response to it, Harry's latest uh, documentary about mental health, I think they together underline how much those two or these two, William and Harry, how much they went through in the sequence of events which began with that panorama interview obtained now by Martin Bashir, we know by deception, and which went through uh, and concluded with the death of their mother in that road accident in Paris nearly two years later. Now, let's not forget that William was just 13 years old at the time of the Bashir panorama interview. And so far as we understand matters, he was always against his mother doing that interview. As we understand it, he met Martin Bashir and was suspicious of him, advised his mother to be very careful 
He was devastated, William, when he saw the Panorama interview. He was at school at the time. And I think we uh, are entitled to conclude that uh, he feels that the Dyson report has confirmed all the suspicions that he had at the time. Uh, hence, I think, the, the barely suppressed hurt and anger that you detected in the statement by Prince William last night. Now, uh, as for Harry, uh, as we know, he found it much more difficult to cope with those events. When he was just 11 when the Panorama interview aired, he was 12 when his mother died in, in the road accident. And as we know, he has encountered real pervasive mental health issues over the years. And he has developed a real hatred, perhaps at times a rather disproportionate hatred of the media. But we can trace all of it back to what happened 25 years ago. And as we know, Harry now feels it necessary to uh, speak about his mental health issues in the hope that it will help others. And he's done it again, or he's doing it again in these uh, latest uh, series of programs that he's co-produced with Oprah Winfrey. So, yeah, it is absolutely devastating. Nick, right at the heart of this, uh, fundamentally, there was a deception uh, and there were lies told by Martin Bashir. And it's a damning indictment uh, of what he did. Just looking through some of the, some of the elements Lord Dyson uh, addressed, in amongst them was the, the interview itself. And I'm, I'm just looking at some of the wording from the report. It says, um, by early to mid-August 1995 at the latest, she, Princess Diana, was keen on the idea of a television interview. She would probably, this is quoting from the report, she would probably have agreed to be interviewed by any experienced and reputable reporter in whom she had confidence, even without the intervention of Mr. Bashir. And now, Nick, I'm assuming, I mean, you would have been a contemporary of Martin Bashir's to a degree ar around that time. But just talk to us a little bit about that, that reference in the report there. Charlie, I need to say that uh, I made a statement to the Dyson report, a written statement, because, yes, indeed, I was working for Panorama in the mid-1990s. I made a panorama about the royal family, which went out in 1994. And, and this is all recorded uh, 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 and was brought to Lord Dyson's attention. During the course of that uh, panorama program about the royal family, I became aware that uh, Princess Diana was indeed interested in doing an interview for uh, the panorama program. And I pursued that in the uh, first half of 1995. Uh, my approach was entirely open through Patrick Jeffson, her uh, private secretary, and the basis of the interview that she uh, was uh, intending, uh, so she said, to do with me was that it would be forward-looking and it would have uh, focused on her charitable works. Now, I was due twice to go and meet Princess Diana to discuss the Panorama interview with her, but I was then instructed uh, on the 2nd of September 1995 by the then editor of Panorama, Stephen Hewlett, uh, to back off uh, so that uh, a man called Martin Bashir could be given a clear run to secure the interview. And it was explained to me that Martin Bashir uh, was working on a confidential basis and that he was, uh, and that it was necessary to keep this matter secret from the uh, Kensington Palace authorities. And I have to say that I have always wondered in the years since then how it was that Martin Bashir succeeded in getting alongside the princess. Well, uh, now we know. Nick, I just wonder, going back to you, your first answer and, and given what you've just said as well, your reflections now on the damage that's been done. And I know we speak to you in your role as a royal correspondent, but uh, I can't help but ask that question. Well, I think there are um, implications for the BBC, and that's not a subject for me to speculate about. Um, this will take some days now for it to settle down and for people to look at the, the damage that has been done. But uh, yeah, I mean, there is very considerable damage to the BBC's reputation. Uh, and that is a matter of uh, very considerable regret for all of us who work for the BBC, for all of us who've worked for BBC News uh, over the decades, uh, to think that uh, this one rogue reporter, as he's been described, um, and the funny thing is he used to sit just behind me in the new broadcasting house in London. but. Uh, he and I have never discussed what happened 25 years ago. And uh, again, now I think we may understand why uh, there was a reluctance on his part to do so. 
Uh, Nick, just, just one thought, if you would. Uh, we've heard, of course, uh, from Prince Harry. I mean, he, he, he issued a, a statement which was not on camera, um, but he has also been talking at some length about the troubles he's had over the years. And now, now that there is this clear line that many people are talking about. Yeah. And as I was saying, Charlie, I think, you know, that uh, we have perhaps underestimated the severity of the mental health issues that Harry has grappled with over the years. He's alluded to them. He's made no secret of it. Uh, he is now talking about them uh, uh, quite uh, repetitively um, in, in the uh, uh, podcast a few days ago. Um, there is criticism again in the latest series of uh, uh, interviews that he's done with Oprah Winfrey uh, for Apple TV. Um, there is again criticism of the royal family. He feels that the royal family did not support him and Meghan sufficiently in, in, in their encounters with the media. And he is doing this now, uh, we believe, on the basis that he feels that if he talks about it, it will encourage others to be open about the issues that they are facing. And his motivation is, uh, he says, to help others to deal with uh, any, any problems that they are facing. Nick, thank you very much. That's uh, Nicholas Witchell speaking to us, uh, a royal correspondent. Thank you very much. The industry is split on the issue. Some believe it's the only way. And Johnson has this report. OK, so just to be clear as well, the consultation is on this is on whether or not it should. 8.30, time now to get the news, travel and weather where you are.